is Morgan Davis, D. Morgan Davis, when it goes on the cover of something. Uh, I've been uh, here at the Maxwell Institute uh, almost since it began. And I've been involved over the years in a number of uh, projects. Um, originally, I was uh, part of the editorial team and the man project manager for a thing called the Middle Eastern Texts Initiative that allowed us to make available in the West some of this really important thinking that had been done in the, in the classical Islamic period that wasn't well known or well understood by Western scholars just simply because it wasn't available. I also am a scholar in my own right and I'm working right now on a book that puts the Quran, the sacred texts of Islam, into conversation with the Book of Mormon, the founding scripture of, of the Restoration. Those two books have never been um, compared in a deep, rich way before. So I'm working on that right now and, and, and loving every minute of it. And to be a scholar, I think, is different than being a student. Students, um, we should all be students too. You become a scholar by being a student first. Students are acquiring knowledge that is already on hand, right? It's already in the books. Students are learning existing knowledge. A scholar takes that the next step and produces knowledge, brings new knowledge into the world. That's the, that's the aim of scholarship. And, and that puts you on really holy ground because bringing new knowledge into the world is something akin to revelation. And I would argue that scientists and researchers who undertake their research with integrity and with charity are in fact producing a kind of revelation. And that is sacred ground. And, and so becoming a disciple scholar is something that we, we put a lot of thinking into because it is a kind of sacred commission. I would spend some time really putting section 121 deep in my heart because I think you can substitute just a couple of words in this section and have it, have it apply in a very direct way to what scholars do. For example, you could say from, from reading verse 36, the rights of the priesthood are inseparably connected with the powers of heaven and the powers of heaven cannot be controlled nor handled only upon principles of righteousness. We can separate the, you can, you can substitute the powers of heaven with knowledge there. Knowledge cannot be controlled nor handled only upon principles of righteousness. No power or influence can or ought to be maintained by virtue of being a scholar, only by persuasion, by long suffering, by gentleness and meekness, and by love and unfeigned, by kindness and pure knowledge, which shall greatly enlarge the soul without guile and without hypocrisy. I love that language because it, it spells out how knowledge without love, knowledge without good intent can actually be dangerous. And pure knowledge he defines here as without guile, without hypocrisy. It takes a lot of work to keep our hearts free of hypocrisy and guile. It takes daily repentance, it takes daily introspection, and a willingness to keep our, our minds and our hearts open to other perspectives. That's the work of uh, a disciple scholar. Um, anyone can do the scholarship, anyone can do the research, but having your heart oriented towards the kingdom of God, oriented towards blessing the world, and and making a, a better world, that's, that's, the, that's the discipleship part, and it, and it requires kindness and pure knowledge. Mm -hmm.